all right guys welcome to today's video this is gonna be a very special video because today i'm gonna go through everything i've done on my pc to be the number one champ in rainbow six Siege across a lot of different seasons damn that's a lot of seasons also fun fact i was the first ever champion back in ember when it first got released let's go boys we made it we're champion we made it number one i know a thing or two about rainbow six Siege, so let's get straight into the video all right, so getting into Rainbow Six here, I'm going to show you guys all of the settings that you guys need to become the best in Rainbow Six Siege. So starting off, general stuff here. Let's just go through them real quick. I have personally not changed anything specific here. I would say the big things here is cycle inside camera group. So that means when you're changing between the cameras in game, you cannot jump between like the, the two groups. So you got to use your um, Q&E and one and three in that order. And I also have drone after prep set to manual. That means whenever prep phase ends, I'm going to still be on the drone. If I need to, you know, give some quick information to my teammate, yellow ping something. Is there enemy still spawn peeking? So I don't have to hop off the drone and then hop in the drone again so it's just gonna keep me there in manual so i think manual is the best setting to have personally text channel you know if you guys want to get a little rasped up in the all chat with the enemy team you can have that set to all so you can type the enemies otherwise you can set it to team or turn it off if that's not you know if you don't like to uh, talk really a lot match replay this is a good setting if you want to save the match replay settings i i have it off right now but you know it depends sometimes i have it on sometimes off depending if i watch a lot of match replays or not it's a good option to have on, so I'm gonna keep it on here. Cross matchmaking and cross play communication. I would say keep these two on. There's no reason to just keep them off, so you just keep them on like that. Display metrics. This is if you wanna see your FPS at the bottom. So you guys see at the bottom left of my screen here, there's gonna be this FPS metric. You can change it. I have it binded to my question mark, which you can set up in the settings easily. So you can just hit it and you can see your settings. You can turn it off, not having to go through the settings all the time. So that's a little quick tip if you guys want. All right, so moving on to the HUD settings, we have uh, everything here. Uh, let me just show you real briefly what I personally have. It's pretty standard stuff, I'd say. I've mostly removed like the health bar and stuff because I don't really want to see those kind of things. So let's just start from the top and work our way down. So starting off, the compass appearance. So starting off, look at my HUD right here, chat. As you guys can see, there's not a lot on my screen. I've done that because I've, I've changed the HUD a little bit. So this is usually what it looks like, the compass. You guys see how big it is in the middle. I don't like it that big. Uh, so I just put it on simplified and makes it smaller, as you guys can see down here. So you can also change loadout inputs if you want. If you want the number to be gone, like down here, if that's not something you care about. As you guys can see here now, you guys can see the numbers here between which key you gotta press to change it. If you guys are a veteran, you might not really need to have it like that. Uh, health, I personally like health off because when you're very low HP, what happens is it's, it's blinking red on your screen all the time and I feel like it's in a distraction, so I just turn it off. Also, it can help a lot of people with their confidence taking gunfights if they're low HP. Try for yourself, see if you like off. I, I really like it. It just makes it a more clean aesthetic on my screen. Uh, moving on, we have general reminders. These the general reminders are these right here. So it's going to be, for example, when you, the, the button you crouch, you, you do certain things, you yellow ping. I already know these things. I've been playing the game for like eight years now. So this is not something I really need to have on. And I just feel like it's it just makes the screen look a bit cleaner and stuff. So we going to turn that one off. Also, an OG setting a lot of you guys don't know about is this one right here, Operator Reticle. If you guys turn this off, it's actually going to remove the dot in the middle of the screen, as you guys can see here. So if you guys don't like the dot in the middle whenever you're playing the game, you guys got to change the Operator Reticle. But I like it on because it, it, for me, it personally helps keep like, you know, have my cross at head level at all times because I'm using the dot in the middle to, you know, keep it at head level. You know what I mean, chat? It just makes it easy. It just makes it easy, pretty much. Let's see. What else do we have here, chat? Pretty much that. Those are the, the main thing that I've personally changed. Nothing too crazy. Uh, I've, I've, I've made some small stuff here. For example, like bands. You know, when someone gets banned and it shows up on the top right corner of your screen. I personally do not like that. It's just annoying. I don't care, you know, so I just turn it off. I just like it cleaner without it. Uh, round number as well. This is like a, this is not that big of an option. You guys can try it out if you guys are in a casual or a ranked or whatever. It's just, doesn't, it, it's not going to say match point at the top of your screen whenever you're in the round. Or it's not going to say like round nine, round eight, etc, etc. Keep it off. I think it, it looks cleaner. It's just up to you. It doesn't really, it's not a big deal. Versus update. This is where if you kill someone and then it's going to show up 5v4 in the middle of the screen. I personally do not like that as well. I have it off. 
it just makes for a cleaner aesthetic in my opinion as well you know less stuff happening on the screen you know i'm already looking at the at the top of my screen how many there is alive so it's not a big deal for me really uh so i i just i just keep it off yeah not a big deal uh operator guides as well i think this is a thing that not a, not a lot of uh, older people are gonna have on because you know they already know how the operators work etc so if you're a new player to this game i would suggest keeping operator guys on which is also a default setting so you, if you haven't changed it it's probably already gonna be on uh so i just turned that off because you know i play this game i know how all the operators work uh so it's not a big deal it's not a big deal all right moving on to, we have audio so i actually because i have a streaming setup i actually have a a go xlr but for the majority of you guys it's gonna say like hyperx if you guys have the hyperx cloud 2 headset that i also use whenever i'm out traveling that's actually the headset i'm using right now but I've, i have my headset plugged into my go xlr so it's a bit different here but this is just like all the inputs outputs you know microphone in microphone out sound in sound out stuff like that so it's not it's nothing crazy as long as you have the right settings like you have your headset that you want to use uh, in here so it's all good uh subtitle i know a lot of people like to have the subtitles on to see what's going on personally i like it i like it off i don't think i need it on really yeah it's just like a preference thing there as well if you want subtitles on sure if you don't want it on sure it's not a big deal uh moving on to master volume this is just like a preference as well how how loud do you like to listen to your music your game audio whatever you know keep it at the the level you want and you feel comfortable with using uh music i turn music all the way off i don't need music at all i mean we're all listening to spotify anyway right so <laughs> keep that off keep that off uh dialogue volume i would say keep the dialogue volume on and at least 50 percent or higher i have it on 100 right now and that is because sometimes the operators that you play against if you flash them for example they're gonna make like a moaning sound all right pause i, I didn't mean like that but yeah if they, they if they make a noise when they're flashed you're gonna know that they're flashed they're not gonna do it if if it's set to zero so i would definitely set it to at least 50 percent or higher so i'd definitely keep it on moving on to dynamic range I used to be a big night mode kind of guy, but recently I've changed to hi-fi and I've got used to the got used to hi-fi. But I feel like I can hear uh, steps a little bit more on hi-fi, even though night mode is supposed to be the one that you can hear more steps. Uh, but same thing here. You guys can try out a little bit which ones you prefer. I used to be a night mode kind of guy, but now I'm I made my transition to hi-fi. So it's whatever you guys prefer, to be honest. I'm I'm a hi-fi kind of guy right now. All right, moving on. We have display settings. This is the juicy stuff. All right, so, so I want you guys to make sure you guys have resolution set to the maximum, which makes the game look the best play the best all that juicy stuff display mode has to be set to full screen this is going to give you the least input delay and the most fps possible i have a 360 hertz monitor here so i'm obviously going to use 360 hertz because it's going to give me the smoothest experience uh, of course you gotta have a pc that be able to match the hertz on the on the screen so i want my pc to be pushing at least 360 fps at all times so i can actually fill the the benefits of 360 hertz uh moving on we have aspect ratio this is a very big um big thing in siege a lot of people like to play four by three we have a lot of people playing six by nine which is the same thing as auto so everyone starts on auto at the moment i i, I do like three by two quite a lot it feels it feels good uh movement wise um uh, it's not too hard to hit heads so yeah d definitely like try these out these these three these are like my top three that i would tell anyone to use in siege so 4 3 3 2 and 16 by 10 those are my three favorite uh, resolutions so sometimes if i feel like i gotta stretch the image a little bit more i go 4 3 sometimes i go 6 and 10 just depending on how i feel uh, i don't really like to have like a set like a set aspect ratio it's just depending on how i feel on the day do i feel like today oh, shit, i'm feeling like a four by three kind of day today i'm feeling six and ten you know it just it just depends on the mood pretty much if you're consistently like performing better with one with another than the other then i mean there's there's the answer right v-sync keep this thing off it's just gonna create input lag i would not suggest using v-sync at all keep that off same thing here fps limits you don't want to set to 30 60 75 90 nothing like that keep it off let your pc push the frames for less input lag more fps it's just gonna be better overall widescreen letterbox keep this thing off nobody likes a widescreen letterbox let's be honest i don't even know what it does field of view this is also a very big thing that a lot of people have been discussing on you know what's the best field of view what should i use what do you use so i actually am a big fan of playing anything between 86 and 90 i feel like 90 you, you see a lot it feels good playing 1.5s acogs all of these different scopes that are more zoomed in 
if i'm if i only like to play for example hollow sites or one x sites you know 84 could be really good uh 87 is like used to be my main i would suggest you guys to use anything between 84 and 90 that's what the majority of pros use that's what the best players use so definitely 84 to 90 choose anything in between there just try it out for yourself let me know what you guys uh, decided to pick in the comments below so moving on to graphics we have nvidia reflex low latency i would definitely put this on plus boost uh, it's gonna give you that extra fps boost and that latency stuff that i was talking about earlier the input lag it's just gonna make your pc feel better your game's gonna feel smoother more responsive so keep this on for sure latency flash indicator is just like i just don't even know what it does and i'll be honest i don't even know what it does let's just move on uh when it comes to graphics the best settings in rainbow six Siege, i would say is keep everything on the low but you need to have shadows on medium so you can actually see shadows shadows does not show on low but they do show on medium so i would say medium definitely keep it on medium and everything else on low and keep the anti-aliasing off those are the only settings you need guys those are the only settings you need and with the lod you can play around with it, it this one does not really matter that much it's just gonna so, sometimes uh, objects might disappear and you know appear depending on how far away you are from it it's like a bug like a like a bug that we have in siege but it does not really matter you can keep it on ultra or keep it on low it does not really matter i might keep it on ultra for now though uh, it's not going to change your fps whatsoever pretty much so but those are the those are the best settings i would say that you guys should use in siege uh, you don't need anything like zooming death lens effects ambient occlusion vfx quality all of these you can just put on put them on off or low you don't need any of them just make sure you have anti-aliasing off and not on like taa or anything like that and then you guys should be set but yeah these are the number one champion settings right here uh moving on to controls i'm actually running my mouse on 2000 hertz right now that it, it's it's so it's um i have a modern mouse that has racer internals in it so like racer components and stuff inside the mouse and that mouse is able to run at 2000 hertz when i open up uh, my racer program here and if you guys have a g pro which is a very common mouse you guys can uh, download logitech g hub and do the same thing but in that program so what you do is here is make sure for the majority of you guys it's going to be a thousand it's going to be the max but if you guys have the ability to go higher you guys can try higher uh if you go too high it might uh, you know it might screw a little bit with your pc you might have some jitters and stuff so uh, that's why i put it at 2000 it's like a good mix so i think yeah the higher you can go it's the better you're gonna feel the better it's gonna it's gonna be smoother overall so i'm gonna keep it at 2000 for now someone told me i don't know how true it is but i got told that if you use any hertz above 1000 you should keep the raw input on so yeah so if you have if you're running more than 1000 hertz on your mouse keep the raw input on and not off mouse look inversion you keep this disabled 100 percent. i would not keep this on so you guys are probably thinking why is your sense so high here on on the hip fire let me explain the the theory here so this is what my sense would look like if i was if i was playing a 400 dpi on your mouse so it's a mouse setting if you're playing foreign dpi normal multiplier so you haven't changed any text documents on rainbow six siege this is what my sense would be 12 12 it's very default no biggie at all however i'm using higher dpi so i'm playing 1600 dpi this would be the same thing as playing 12 12 like this so if i'm playing foreign dpi this is my settings if i'm playing 800 dpi I have to play 6-6. I have to compensate by halving my sensitivity after my uh, DPI or whatever. But because I'm using 60-60, I'll be able to like go between like smaller numbers. So if I want to play, you know, 12.2, 12.3, I can do this with uh, with my multiplier and also with a higher DPI. So I just got to do the calculations, right? And I'm going to get into it very soon. Moving on to my um, mouse ADS sensitivity. I'm using 35 here on the 1X. Uh, I usually like to play around with it. I usually like to play with between values of 30 and 42. Those are, I feel like that's my kind of sweet spot. And uh, right now, 35 feels really good. And I have 57 on the 1.5 and then two times I have 55. And you guys can see what the rest is. This is like the majority of this is preference. I would say play around as well. Play some training or whatever. Uh, shooting range to test out what you guys, what you guys prefer. Uh, moving on scroll wheel i i mean i do use and switch with the scroll wheel sometimes a lot i know for a lot of people it can mess you up in gun fed sometimes so you might want to turn it turn it off sometimes but i do actually change guns on my scroll wheel sometimes so i'm gonna keep it on gadget deployment and joint deployment i would say keep these both to advanced so let me explain what the gadget deployment and the drone deployment does on standard so whenever you throw if for example if you're playing jaeger on defense and you put down a jaeger device in the animation that you're putting down 
down the, the ADS itself. It's gonna go through with the whole animation, but if you play advanced, you can cancel out the animation. So if you're a better example would be if you're playing bandit and a banner chicken and you hear that the thermite is putting on the uh, on the, on the charge on the wall if you're playing standard you cannot cancel out animation halfway through if he's bathing you to put it on one side and then putting it on the other side so keep it on advanced you can cancel out the animations this is just gonna be way better uh, moving on, we have drone deployment. Uh, this means if you're throwing out the drone as an attacker, that means your character is immediately going to hop on the drone, which we don't want. So if you have it on advanced, you can you can, you can can throw out your drone and you're not going to hop on it immediately. And that can, you know, bait your enemies into peeking you. You, you can get some free kills by using advanced and, you know, bait your enemies. Aim, lean, sprint, crouch, prone, walk. Uh, with the aiming, I feel like playing hold is way better than playing toggle because it just... It just gives you the ability to move faster, to shoot faster, and not do all of these things. So I'd definitely say keep this on hold. Moving on, we have lean. This now, this is a very hard thing. Not a lot of people use hold. I uh, I've been playing hold for like very long time, and it's and I've mastered it pretty much. But I would say to anyone playing hold, that you know, I, it's not really worth it. If you if you're trying to get into hold, it's 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 not worth it. I feel like, yeah, I feel like toggle is way better for the current siege. It's just easier to get used to, and I think. You know, the majority of pro players uses toggle as well. So I would say keep toggle. If you want, you can try hold. But if it doesn't like it, you just go back to toggle. Sprint. This is a default thing. Oh, it's just hold. It's just uh, default. Uh, nothing crazy. Uh, crouch. I have it on hold as well. I know a lot of people have it on toggle as well. But I prefer to have it on hold. It just gives me the ability to, you know, go really quick and spam crouch and, you know, do all of these things. And the rest is just default. Prone toggle default. Uh, walk is hold as well. Just default stuff. And the rest here is just controller stuff, so I don't I don't uh, play controller. Moving on to the customized control. So if you want to change your binds or anything, I've actually changed a few binds. So let's see here. So here is the toggle performance metrics about the FPS that you can have in the bottom left. You can bind to any key if you, of your liking. So the thing that I've actually changed in my own uh, controls is I've changed the um, the crouch. So I crouch on control, and a lot of you guys prone on control. So, and then I prone on C instead. So I've actually flipped it around. So, you know, like, cause I'm used to, I came from CS. So crouching on control just felt like a normal thing for me. So I just changed it to control in Siege as well. And then now I just prone on C instead. Uh, for my mouse button, I actually, so I actually do, I slow walk in game. So let me show you what that looks. So you, you have normal walking like this, but if I hit my slow walk key, you see how I'm walking very slow. I have that on my mouse. So whenever I hold this uh, mouse button on my mouse, I will slow walk. And there's one more thing I've changed on my mouse. So we have the secondary gadget. I've also changed that to my mouse button. So pulling out like um, a breach charge, a nade, a flashbang. I do that as well on my mouse. And I have two buttons for it. So I have one button here and one button here. Yeah, and I, that's that's it for my the, the controls that I've changed in Rainbow Six Siege. Moving on to privacy. This is more for like streamers and stuff. So like I would actually use some of these stuff. So you can, you, you, know, you know, you can put your own name here, for example. You can put on whatever you want. And up here's nickname. You can hide there. And as well, if you're a normal player, you don't want people to know it's you. You can also put on a custom name. Moving on to accessibility. Uh, I actually play with white on the optic color. I feel like it looks pretty good. It looks clean. But I do have to, I do change sometimes to, for example, I, I do like default as well. As well as I like light blue. So it just depends what I really like. So you can just change to whatever color you really like. Uh, and then you can also change like the brightness. So like you won't see the... As you guys can see, I can barely see it. Uh, if, it if I have it on the lowest, or 73, it's a little better. And 100, it's going to be the brightest. So feel free to play around with those settings. Uh, next option, screen shake intensity. You guys have to keep this off. There's no reason to have anything else than off. And I'll explain why. So whenever a C4 goes off, a grenade, a thermite, your whole screen would shake. And by turning this option off, your screen is not going to shake. So it's not going to mess up your aim or anything. So definitely keep this off. It's one of the best options they've added to Siege uh, a few years ago. So keep this off. And I think that's pretty much it from my accessibility settings. I have these team colors on default. Uh, enemies being red, teammates being blue. And then you can change the, sc the chat scale here. As you guys can see here, you can change it. I had changed it to 90 from 100. It's not a big change at all. It's just whatever. That's that's it for my in-game Rainbow Six Siege settings. All right, so continuing, I'm going to show you guys how to get a custom multiplier on Rainbow Six Siege now. So what you guys got to go and do is you go to your desktop and you guys got to type the documents, documents, and open up the documents file. 
Guys, can I open up the documents file and go to my games, Rainbow Six Siege, and go to the account that's your account? And it, so this is my main account. If you guys only have one account, it's just only going to show up on file. So just go to whatever your account is and then go to game settings. And in the game settings right here, you guys got to scroll down until you guys find this right here. Mouse sensitivity and multiplier unit. And I have this set to 0 0.001. The default is 0 0.02 like this. But if you guys, for example, would like to play the same things I do, you guys got to go and do 0 0.01. So I play 1600 DPI, which is going to be like the best for, for, you know, fast mouse responsiveness and whatnot. So I would recommend 0 0.01 if you just want to play like default but you, you change you can change it to let's say 0.2 this makes it so that you can only change between values and if you play foreign dpi you can only change between values of uh, 10 and 100 so you can change between like 9.5 9.6 so this is actually the one uh, multiplier i would recommend to a lot of people and then you have other multipliers like the kicks multiplier which is like looks like stuff like this but you just gotta do your, your research on it what you guys think is better for you moving on we also have mouse settings so i want you guys to open up your windows key search mouse go to mouse settings and then press additional mouse settings and go to pointer options i want you guys to turn off this option right here enhance pointer position i want you guys to turn it off and I also want you guys to set this thing here to the middle one so it's gonna be six out of eleven so go ahead and do that for me. Also, if you want a custom uh, pointer like me, you can also just go here and, and browse and, pre and search up cross. So like this is the default, right? This is what the default looks like. But if you guys want what I have, you guys can search cross and pick any of these. So I usually I just pick this one and press apply. And that's how you get like this, this custom one that I have as well. Moving on to your keyboard settings. I want you guys to just search up keyboard here. Uh, open the keyboard one and I want you guys to put both of these to short right here and fast all the way to the right and just press apply and that's pretty much it you gotta do for the keyboard as well moving on we have the monitor settings personally so I, I usually uh, use a BenQ monitor so what I would do is I would put Diac to off and the reason I have Diac to off and a lot of people would say you should use Diac premium or high the reason I have it to to off is because I feel like it's it just feels better to me personally it feels more smoother I know if you play CSGO, I don't know, premium is a really good option, but I just like it off because it just feels smoother all around. Even though you get like a little bit more ghosting, but it just feels better for me personally. So it's like, it has a personal feeling. Uh, and I also have the AMA setting set to premium. So the highest setting. And I would say those are the two main options that you got to use. For the rest of the settings that you have on your monitor, I would say just play around with it. Also try the, the black equalizer setting. You can, you can put it very high, put it very low. But personally, I like to have it somewhere in the middle, so around 10. Uh, that's also, that also helps with like enemies hiding in corners. So you can see them easier and whatnot. So those are the three main options I would change. The rest is like different gammas and you can just, you can pick whatever you feel like is better for you. So that, that's everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this settings video a lot. Uh, this was how to get champion pretty much in Siege. If you put on these settings, there's nothing that will stop you really. Uh, this is like kind of the, the, the majority of the settings that pro players use. And if you just put this, you, you obviously you got to put in hours as well. Like how to get better at the, at the game, better game sense, better aim. So you guys got to do all of these things. You know, play a lot of shooting range, work on your aim, play a lot of rank, a lot of faces, all of these different things. Always try and, you know, be, be around better people so you always get better at the game. But other than that, let me know what you guys think about the video. If you guys want more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. Also, I want you guys to comment mousepad down below. I'm giving away 30 mousepads in total, the Soki mousepad. You guys will have a chance to win a free mousepad. I will cover all the shipping, everything. All you guys gotta do is just comment mousepad or anything random below. I'll draw a random winner. And yeah, see you guys in the next video.